tranquille. was successful in reviving the mummified remains of the Dragon King's undefeatable army. Shang Tsung, however, began to realize that his relevance in the partnership had evaporated once his talents for soul transplantation were no longer needed. The balance of power within the Deadly Alliance had seemingly been undone. Fearing betrayal, he secretly instructed Kano to steal Quan Chi's amulet in an attempt to gain control of the army. Since part of the soul transfer spell included the command to obey he who possesses the amulet, the army would obey only Shang Tsung and not Quan Chi once the amulet was in his possession. Amulet in hand, Shang Tsung revealed his betrayal to Quan Chi and commanded the army to destroy the sorcerer. Shang Tsung would succeed where others had failed. He would conquer the realms. He would conquer Earth. Empowered by the godlike energy he received from Blades, Shang Tsung found that he could alter the forms of others. Enraged that he was denied the prize, Shao Kahn charged the sorcerer. With a gesture of his hand, Shang Tsung transformed his former master into a centaur slave. Shang Tsung had become the ruler of Outworld at last. Impressed with Captain Marvel's fighting ability, but angered by his defeat at the hero's hands, Shang Tsung sought to create a race of super warriors. They would have Captain Marvel's abilities, but would be a perversion of the hero's image. Through sorcery, he combined blood from a torn piece of Captain Marvel's cape with the flesh of a Tarkatan corpse. Never before had his flesh pits echoed with the roar of such a monstrosity. With an army of super Tarkatans, Shang Tsung will be invincible. Shang Tsung voraciously consumed Shao Kahn's soul, absorbing his immense power. Overwhelmed by his newfound sorcery, he fled to Outworld. Moments before suicide, Shang Tsung was visited by Bo Raicho. The mentor of warriors offered to teach him to control the dark magic, but for a special purpose. Liu Kang had become a god. The power had corrupted him, transforming him into a tyrant. He needed to be stopped. After rigorous training, Shang Tsung mastered the one technique that could finish Liu Kang. Vengeance would finally be his. Kormika's power overwhelmed me, such that I would have been driven mad had I not spent centuries mastering the dark powers beyond the grasp of ordinary mortals. Now, I am the master of time and fate. But Kormika's fall proves that even titans can be defeated. 
Though my new power lets me roam infinite timelines and feast upon the souls of billions, I am vulnerable. To survive, I must return to the shadows, avoid confrontation, and work my will through the hands of others. More specifically, through the hands of my fellow Titans. These monstrous beings are applied easily by appealing to their greed, vanity, and fear. Through them, every soul in eternity bends to my influence. In my new era, morality will be exposed as the illusion it is. The cunning will prosper, while the good suffer. This is a word of Shang Tsung. Have a nice day. After escaping Lei Chin prison, I was hounded by the Imperial police. I needed a place to hide and to recuperate while I plotted the best way forward. I knew the remote canton of my youth would be perfect. To escape capture, I traveled by sea. Little did I know that a gargantuan storm was brewing. My tiny craft was smashed apart. I closed my eyes, waiting to drown, hoping that the Netherrealm wouldn't claim my soul. But when I reopened them, I found myself not in hell, but on a deserted island. From its ruins, I could tell that great sorcerers had once lived there. In the caves beneath the ruins, I found what I can only describe as a well of souls. Once I learn how to wield its power, I will become invincible. Flawless victory. Your soul is mine. 